Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Transparency is not rocket science, but the ability of the ordinary people to see clearly and distinctly through any process, thing or procedure, be it in government or outside of government, EFCC, ICPC, and transparency. That the Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar Malemi, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, has called for the sacking of the Acting Chair of the Economic and Financial Crime Commission, EFCC, on grounds of diversion of recovered loot to insubordination, misconduct, and about 22 other weighty allegations bordering on accounting discrepancies of figures of recovered asset and transparency in the management of same is no longer news. Recall that in early 2019, Maguai flaunting the achievement of his three years stewardship before journalists in Abuja, announced that the EFCC under his watch had recovered 794 billion naira, $261 million, about, that's about 77.8 billion naira, that's 1.1 million pounds, and about 407 mansions from looters. Oh boy. He also stated that the commission convicted no fewer than 700 and 703 corrupt persons and institutions within the period under review. However, in a sharp twist, the then former Minister of Finance, Kemi Adeosho, by letter dated February 9, 2019, stated that her ministry was only able to account for 91.3 billion recovered loot lodged in the CBN account by the EFCC from 2015 to February 2019, and subsequently asked Magu for an explanation as to the discrepancies in figure. Was Magu overhyping his recovery, or they just kept some for themselves? Again, even though the EFCC haven't given a new figure of loot recovered by them, distinct from the figure in 2019, the Attorney General of the Federation, Bakam Malemi, in June 2020, accused the EFCC boss of lodging into recovering account with the CBN only 543 million naira of recovered loot, leaving a shortfall of 254 billion naira, sorry, billion before, from the 2019 figure. He also accused him of unauthorized sales of recovered fixed asset. The sound of this money can give one high blood pressure. In a country where people live on less than one dollar a day, God, God, where are you? Well, typical of our brand of politics, a group under the auspices of canary collective agenda. And some northern leaders also called on the President Muhammad Buhari to sack the Attorney General for daring to call for the sack of Mago. Their request is hinged on the claim that such a call was an indirect indictment of the Buhari's administration. You remember, even the previous Senate had refused to confirm Magu on grounds of a damning security report from the Department of State Service, that's DSS, citing lack of capacity and fitness to hold the office of the chair of EFCC. Is this a case of incompetence, that of the bushmaid becoming the hunter, or shared desperation by those whose hands and the cookie jar, as my boy Jimmy Disu will say, being afraid of Magu exposing them sooner or later. Well, since the court, Koram Ijoma Ojuku J, had said the concern allows Magu to act in perpetuity, subject to Mr. President's discretion, we await the time for Mr. President to unravel you know, this. But be sure that this movie is far from being over, so grab your popcorn and drink. To reduce all of this quagmire and infighting, one would have expected as a way of consistent institutional strengthening the same National Assembly would have by now amended the law setting up our anti-graft agencies like EFCC and ICPC to be in tandem with global best practices and what is obtainable in countries that strive to achieve transparency, i.e. separation of investigative agencies from the agencies that would recommend prosecution, separation of prosecuting agencies from asset management, 
That way, you not only enhance transparency, probity, and accountability in the agencies, you also make money on management of recovered assets even before selling. And subsequently, also reduce the concentration of too many powers in one agency and avoid abuses such as the one complained of by Malemi and Adeosho. The FCC would also be devoid of indiscriminate use of powers of arrest and psychological torture to obtain evidence found by pursuit of prosecutor, prosecutorial record and statistics chasing as ticking the numbers. Because when such evidence violates the laid down procedural rules and, pro and processes, a thorough prosecutorial review agency will refuse prosecution and professionalism will be enhanced. I would therefore advocate that no matter how frivolous or vexatious these allegations against Magu are, I think the president should not turn a deaf ear to same, especially coming from his chief legal officer, and as a way of reposing confidence in his apostles and believers that this administration is still fighting corruption and not just mere chasing shadows. It is pertinent to appoint a renowned forensic auditor, auditors, please, not interim management committee, to audit the account of both the EFCC and ICPC and make such report public. Also, the office of the Antonio General should be questioned to ensure that their cry is not a cover-up. That way, the administration would not only have reiterated its position that nobody's above the law, but both parties and their supporters would have been assured of fairness and equity. Then and only then can we truly say we are building an institution that will leave us and not the physical building housing such agencies or commission. As a concentration of absolute power in an agency in itself breeds corruption. If you hold both the yam and the knife, you will definitely cut a slice for yourself. Together, let's stop this yam slicing mentality. I was talking about um, the, 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 the laws. Um, at some point, the Senate had a problem, or the, the National Assembly had a problem with confirming Magu. And the law says that the president can keep him in acting capacity for as long as he so desires. So I would have thought, like Le Libero said, that part of what will be the concern of the Senate is that we don't want to be in this kind of situation again. So that relevant law will have been amended to ensure that we don't keep someone in acting capacity forever. But as you can see, nothing has happened in that direction, which means the intention might not exactly be as noble as the, the people the, the tend to make us believe. On the other side also is the fact that right from day one, I've asked myself about the issue of competence. We have uh, uh, um, a, a, a boss of the anti-corruption agency who is more focused on catching them after they have stolen. <laughs> we need to move our anti-corruption fight away from catching them after the money has left to a, pre, a prevention kind of a situation, make it difficult or nearly impossible for people to steal. Okay, let me come that in there. Be... Let me come in there on the prevention because my, my mind went to prevention, but not necessarily the prevention you just spoke of. I, I, because when Libra spoke, essentially what came to my mind is separation of powers. That, was, that uh -huh. seemed to be what he was presenting to us. But I said to myself, even where we have separation of powers in governance, are we even seeing it working? So the problem is still fundamentally with the people we're dealing with. They will find a way around it. So I say, let's take a step even behind that and say, how can we get the right people in? So we need to take away the money magnet that is at the heart of our governance so that these people who are going in there, because you don't blame, the, you don't blame these people, the thugs or whoever, that are so-called 419ers who are dr drawing near to governance because the attraction is too strong. Yeah. And someone said that if you govern for like four years, you've got more than enough to set yourself up for life. So why don't we take it away? Why don't we disincentivize um, those kind of people and make it more about service like they have in the UK. You have your job, but you're coming to serve. Because listening to someone like uh, the lady for COA, uh, Professor Shurnaya, recently, my heart bled that someone like that cannot get into governance. We need those kind of people who see governance as service, as a laying down of your life, so that we can then get you know, the, the kind of right people around governance that are not going to be, you're not going to be chasing them for money and mansions. Let me stop there. Well, for me, when I hear those mind-boggling figures, you know, those billions, the way Libras drops those billions, and I just go dizzy. Like, <laughs> how do people sleep it's at night? It's another world. Yeah, how do they sleep They're at night? They're not living with us. You know, <laughs> the yam and the, 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 the knife, knife mentality. You're just, just helping yourself. Yeah, yeah. just helping. It's, 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 it's the buffy. word. Mm. Margot said he's convicted 703 corrupt persons and institutions. That, in, that alone is humongous. Mm. You mean 
seven, almost a thousand. And these are high profile. No, They're not no. just... How many of them are high profile? And even the Kemi Adioshu last... thing, as at last year, what did they do about it? All the way till now, we're still... How many of them are high... The high profile ones are, you know, barely see the... Rookie, of... you, you've had a right, taste of, of governance. Right. Why not tell us what it's like on the inside? Uh, from, it's, it's really, really very fascinating to me. Um, these people that you appoint to fight, not, not corruption, as far as I see it, your political enemies. Because once you switch to the other side, seems like the cases all drop. Yeah. And for me, when you confiscate things that um, are your friends, if, if you will, how, how is that true? And how, when we see no prosecutions, we see no jail time, except you're on, in an opposing party. So for me, they're using the EFCC, the ICPC, to witch hunt. I'm sure you all know what happened to uh, former Senate, um, Senate President um, Bukola Saraki um, with his um, asset declaration form and all that court um, thing. And that's because he wasn't playing ball with the um, um, executive. And so I, I really, really believe that this is one institution that needs to be above the fray. And for sure, if they are even submitting figures that don't add up, which is already just crazy because you're meant to be fighting corruption and then you're the one actually perpetrating it, I really think this, that, that body doesn't even have any place in our society. Mm -hmm. And we need to find a way to have public input to appointing these people, not oh, just wow. executives. We need to That's find different. a way of making public input. Yeah. Yes, so um, we in. need to yeah. find a way of um, making them accountable. We'll, we'll continue to... Yes. Um, why you also hold us accountable, we we'll want to hold you accountable by hearing what you have to say. So we'll pause here to you, hear you speak your mind. On raising the bar on certified certificates, Parfin Herb says... But in Nigeria, the cost or penalty of doing the wrong thing is often cheaper than doing the right thing. Take, for example, basic traffic infraction, running into tens of thousands, if paid directly to the government, is so insignificant so that it's often cheaper to pay a bribe to the un underpaid enforcement personnel. You have a point, my brother. On sexual offenses, Sevik says, I have spoken about this severally. Gender-based violence is a reality in our society. We must rehabilitate and punish victims and perpetrators of rape. Thank you for joining your voices to us and that of a treasure, our sister here. On Africa Wakanda complex, our viewers continue to lift our spirits. Phantom 2K10 says this channel is greatly underappreciated and underrated. I agree with you. But we are still grateful for this platform and we, you great people behind it. We hear you, Phantom. Shout it out there for people at the back to hear. In the meantime, keep your conversation coming on our social media platform, on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, and on Twitter and Instagram, at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, simply go to plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. And after the break, Balaho speaks to poor men and empty mansions. I can't wait to hear. Me too. Ha, ha, ha.